In today's episode, we're going to look at Hollywood's fascination with true crime, mass murderers, and serial killers, and ask the question, does it create problems? I'm going to specifically look at why we are fascinated with true crime. I'm going to look at some specific examples of how focusing on serial killers, mass murderers, may bring about a, a level of obsession and celebrity to them. And then finally, I'm going to wrap it up by uh, highlighting Quentin Tarantino's recent Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and how he avoids exploiting true crime mass murders uh, at the expense of victims. I'm Jonathan Hederly, and this is Psych Cinema. Psych Cinema is where I take the films and television shows that I love and I dig deep into the psychology found in them. Before we get started, do me a favor, subscribe to our channel and click on that notification bell. Now I want to give a spoiler warning to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If you haven't seen this film, which I already gave a quick review, I absolutely adored it. But if you haven't seen it, pause this video, go out and see it. Seriously, what are you waiting for? And then come back and watch this video where I'm going to spoil the ending. So. You've been warned. So when word got out that Quentin Tarantino's latest project was gonna be focused on the Charles Manson murders and Sharon Tate, there was a degree of anticipation, a little bit of trepidation, because if you're familiar with his filmography, Quentin Tarantino does not shy away from violence. But Deborah Tate, Sharon Tate's sister, publicly disapproved and called out Quentin Tarantino and all of Hollywood for its continued exploitation of Sharon Tate's murder and the memory of her. Now, turns out that she and Quentin met and spoke, and at the end, some of her reservations and fears were calmed down, and she now has publicly approved of his depiction of, of, of her sister, Sharon, and has especially called out Margot Robbie's performance, saying, I got to see my sister on screen in such a tender and thoughtful manner. But why did she not feel like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was exploitive like a lot of the other projects surrounding Sharon Tate? It's because Quentin Tarantino surprised us by not giving us what a lot of us anticipated or maybe dreaded, which was a very graphic depiction of her murder at the hands of the Charles Manson cult followers. And this is just one of the ways that oftentimes projects that are focused on uh, mass murderers, true crime, or serial killers can, uh, can often be problematic. But it begs the question first, why are we so fascinated with murder, crime, and serial killers? Well, in a lot of ways, it's because of the uncertainty that they bring. We shy at the idea of someone that could do something so horrific, and it's the same thing as if you were driving past a, an automobile accident. Our first instinct is to not look away because we know something horrific has happened, and yet what do many of us have the impulse to do? We want to look at the accident. And so there's a part of our brain that would rather be faced with an uncomfortable truth than uncertainty of what happened. Why else are we fascinated? A lot of times there's a, an element of uh, incongruence of that people are good if we generally believe that people are good or if we believe that we are safe. The idea of such horrific things happening to innocent people oftentimes can really stand out to us and we don't know what to do with that, that kind of paradoxical information. Why are we fascinated with true crime? It's because it provides us knowledge and information. And for us, knowledge and information makes us feel safer. It makes us feel like we have a sense of control, that we can predict when this is happening, that we could foresee it, and in a lot of ways prevent it. So the more information that we have, the more confident we are and that this will not happen to us. So you have all of this information, you have all of these pop culture products out there that's focused on serial killers like Charles Manson, or recently there was a lot of um, material on Ted Bundy that surfaced again. And we have the upcoming season of Netflix Mindhunter dropping here as well. And yet it presents with a little bit of a dilemma. Why? Well, because even though some of these uh, shows and films can be viewed as informative, by nature, they are being sold to us and marketed to us as entertainment. Think about it. This is the 50th anniversary of the Charles Manson murders in 1969. And just this year alone, we've seen 
uh, three movies drop about Charles Manson. You have The Haunting of Sharon Tate with Hilary Duff. You have Charlie Says, a film directed by the director of American Psycho that really looks at some of the incarcerated followers of Charles Manson and kind of the psychology behind what drove them to carry out those murders. And then recently you had Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where Charles Manson is really more a backdrop of the larger story focused on its central characters played by Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. In season one of Mindhunter, Charles Manson was constantly referred to, but we now know that he's gonna be a central figure in this upcoming season. You think about the last three or four years alone, there have been other shows, films, podcasts that have focused on Charles Manson. And again, the more that they focus on this, the more they become celebrities, almost like rock stars in their fascination. Because everybody knows the name Charles Manson. But is everyone familiar with the nine victims uh, of his murdering spree other than Sharon Tate? No, that just kind of shows us how we become fixated and fascinated, maybe even obsessed with the cult-like figures, the rock star celebrity figures of mass murderers and serial killers, and we seem to forget and overlook the real life victims in this. And especially when we think about the Charles Manson murders, there are still family members and relatives uh, of, the, of the victims that have to kind of go through constantly all of this deluge of films, television, podcasts, and books that in a lot of ways define their loved ones simply by their death. So what's another potential problem about this fixation and fascination with mass murderers and serial killers? Well, in some ways, we're giving them the attention and acclaim that they might crave. Think about it. Right now in American culture, we are being bombarded by mass shootings, school shootings, or just the fear of it. And in the news media, there is the practice of not naming the shooter when reporting on it. In fact, you'll see all over Twitter and social media this call to action of just focus on the victims, focus on the families and the names of the people that were killed. Don't give the shooter, don't give the murderer a platform. And why do we do this? It's because we do not want to send the message that we can spread their notoriety and their, and their fame by focusing on them. Now, do we generally believe that that was the primary reason or the only reason that somebody goes about a mass killing or to murder a spree? Not necessarily. We recognize there's a number of variables that come into play. But if that's one of their motivating factors, we do not want to celebrate it. We do not want to champion giving them a platform to spread their hate and to give them the celebrity status um, and justify to them or even anyone else that that's the way that they become famous. So why don't we do that with previous mass murderers or serial killers? Why do we feel more comfortable spreading their name and giving them the attention and the infamy that we in real time do everything we can to avoid giving that platform to active shooters, school shooters, mass shooters in today's society and culture? It's because we recognize we do not want to be complicit or accommodate their agenda filled with hate and, and murder. But maybe the biggest issue with our fixation with true crime, mass murderers, serial killers, is that somebody is profiting off of their deaths. Think about that. Every Charles Manson, Sharon Tate book, podcast, film, or television show, somebody not related to Sharon Tate's family is profiting off of telling this story. And that is why Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was so refreshing. Who would have thought that of all people, Quentin Tarantino would avoid the temptation to give us such a blood-soaked, sensationalistic, and graphic depiction of the Charles Manson murders? So what does he do instead? He celebrates Sharon Tate the person, and he gives her scenes where we just get to spend the day with her, get to see what she's like. Her presence isn't there to further drive a plot or to count down the inevitable horrific massacre that she and other people uh, experienced at the hands of Charles Manson's followers. Other shows like Mindhunter focus more on the forensic process of understanding serial killers so that we can catch them, where even if they in some ways are talking about their victims, they're not recreating, depicting, and showing it. Can our fixation and fascination with true crime be informative and helpful? 
Yes, it can. It doesn't mean all of them are problematic. But I think we as a society have to step back and say there are definitely examples and cases where this form of entertainment is exploitive, it's problematic. I'm not one for censoring artists, but I also believe that we need to be accountable and thoughtful about the projects uh, that we make. But I want to know what you think. Does Hollywood's fascination do more good than harm? Or do you think that serial killer fascination, mass murderers, true crime, it actually is more exploitive and profiting and it's more problematic than any good that it can serve. Be sure to leave me your thoughts and comments below. Also check out shrinktank.com where you're going to find articles, podcasts, videos, and more that explores the rich intersection of pop culture and psychology. Follow us on Twitter as well. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Psych Cinema. I'm Jonathan Hederley. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the movies.